Hello, Ian Jameson here again, and uh, it's good to have this brief time together in the Word of God. I hope that you're safe and well. One of the difficult things about this period for all of us is just how many unknowns there are. I'm sure you know what I mean. We're, we're unsure about so many things at the moment. Many of us, um, we don't know just exactly how this COVID-19 outbreak started. We don't know uh, just exactly whether there will be a vaccine that will be found that will be successful. We don't know how this is all going to end. And I'm sure that for many of us too in our personal lives, this has brought about a great deal of uncertainty and unknowns. In Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29, it says this, a well-known verse. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Yes, there are things which are hidden. Yes, there are things that we don't know. I'm sure that all of us are so conscious of that just now. There are so many things that we just don't know, and yet there are things that have been revealed. One of the wonderful things about the study of the Bible is that chapter by chapter, verse by verse, we are reading about the things that have been revealed. God is not a God of silence. God has spoken into our world. He's given us this wonderful revelation of himself to mankind. And as we study the Bible, we are reading things which we can believe with 100% certainty because this is the word of God. There are unknowns and there are mysteries. And yet we find clarity in God's word. I'd like just to turn you to those wonderful verses at the beginning of um, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2, very well known to many of us I'm sure. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. God has spoken. He has spoken in his son. He's spoken with clarity. He's spoken with totality. And he's spoken with finality. He's spoken in his son. This is God's last word, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'd like us to spend a few moments uh, together today thinking about things that we know for certain, things that have been revealed. And to do that, I'd like to turn you back to the epistle that we were looking at on Friday, which is the epistle to the Ephesians. And I'd like us to read some wonderful verses together in Ephesians chapter 3. And these verses are about the mystery, the mystery of Christ. You know, mystery is a, a wonderful theme in the New Testament, something that we find coming to the, the surface of the page in a number of different New Testament books, but particularly in Ephesians. I think there are seven references to um, the mystery in Ephesians, and you can distinguish the different mysteries of the scriptures. And yet, in a sense, uh, in the plans and purposes of God, all of these elements of the mystery and mysteries are all directed in the same way, the same direction, by the same God. So Ephesians chapter 3, and let's read from verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, so remember that he's writing this from a prison cell, we may feel constrained and constricted at the moment, but just imagine how Paul would have felt there in Rome, in prison. Assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. We'll just stop there for a moment. Verse 5 um, is the end of a a lovely section which is very uh, Trinitarian. It has the Trinitarian God at the heart of it. Look at verse 2. It says in verse 2 that this is the stewardship or dispensation of God's grace. God's grace. And then we learn that this is the mystery of Christ. Verse 4. And then we learn at the end of verse 5 that it's revealed by the Spirit. By the Spirit. So it's a mystery concerning Christ the Son. It's something which God has revealed and that revelation is mediated and done through the Spirit. Wonderful. 
what is this mystery? Well, we learn in verse, uh, in these first five verses of the chapter that a mystery is not something mystical, not something um, esoteric or secretive, but something that wasn't revealed in the Old Testament uh, period and has now been made known. One of the wonderful things um, about studying the Bible is that as you start uh, from Genesis and you read through uh, to the New Testament, you find that there is a wonderful progress of revelation that God reveals himself in stages he progressively reveals himself and in Christ we have this wonderful fullness of revelation of God so what is this mystery verse 6 goes on to explain it very clearly indeed this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Absolutely stunning. I'm sure that many of you are aware of the distinction between Jew and Gentile. Gentiles are those who are not Jewish. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, God who established the nation of Israel, who has made to them specific and eternal promises. God still has a very unique relationship with the Jewish nation today and with all of those who are descended from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And yet, and yet we read here and in other places too in the New Testament, Romans 9 to 11 particularly, that we, and I'm including myself here because I'm a Gentile, that we Gentiles have been brought into the blessing that God had in mind. What a wonderful thing. What an amazing truth that we have been brought in to the blessing. Fellow heirs, members of the same body, partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. We live in a day and generation, uh, thousands of years after the Lord was here. And Pentecost is a long time ago now. And we are used to the fact that the church worldwide is perhaps, I don't know, 99% Gentile now. And there are, thank the Lord, many Jews who have come to place their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their own Messiah and been born again and are now part of this one new man. But the majority of us are in churches where there are no Jewish people and so we can forget, we can forget about the glory of what God has accomplished in the church. But here we have one new man, a wonderful body made of both Jew and Gentile, a division that seemed irreconcilable, that there would never be a, a, a unity between Jew and Gentile and yet there has been wonderfully in Christ. I'd like us just to spend a few moments then thinking about three things that uh, Gentile believers have been brought into. We're identified in verse 6 as fellow heirs, thinking here about our possession, our possession. Secondly, our position, members of the same body. And lastly, our participation, we have been made partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Fellow heirs, we have an inheritance an inheritance that is the same for every born again Christian. What is this inheritance? Well, we read a bit more about it uh, earlier on in the epistle in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. In him, that's in Christ, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. And then verse 14, which we focused on on Friday about the Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. What is the inheritance? Well it encompasses a number of things, it encompasses our future glory in the Father's house according to John 14 and then on into the new heavens and the new earth in the future. But you know Christ and the gospel uh, Christ is not a means to an end. He is an end in himself. Our inheritance chiefly is God himself, is the person of Christ. That is our inheritance first and foremost. Yes, it encompasses heaven. Yes, it means future glory. But first and foremost, it's Christ himself. It is coming to know God and coming to be able to call Jesus Christ your saviour. I hope that's something that you can say today, that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Saviour. It's possible that there could be people watching this video who have never yet been born again 
never yet placed their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour. If you've never done that, can I plead with you to do so today without any further delay? The Lord Jesus Christ is the only saviour from sin. We're all sinners and we need a saviour. And God has provided a way of salvation in his son, the Lord Jesus, and his death upon the cross to pay the penalty that sin deserved. And if you will place your faith and trust in him and uh, take him as your Lord and saviour, you will be saved and you will come into the blessings that we're discussing here today. So we have been made uh, heirs, fellow heirs of that inheritance. You know, it's wonderful to compare that with um, the human concept of inheritance. You know, usually we're used to the idea that the, the older, the father, if you like, dies and the son inherits. And of course, uh, in the gospel, it's the son who dies. It's the son of God who dies. And yet, of course, he now lives forevermore and we are able to partake of his inheritance. We're also made members of the same body. An amazing thing, a wonderful truth that we've been brought in, both Jew and Gentile, into the same body. I've never met you and you've never met me. If you're a born again Christian, then you and I are in the same body. You and I are in the same body. Now, we probably don't belong to the same local body of believers, uh, but we belong to the same universal body. A wonderful, wonderful truth. And it's great for us uh, during this time of lockdown to lift our eyes to that reality, that we all belong to one body. Chapter 4 of Ephesians and verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. There is one body. Christ is at its head. A wonderful promise, a wonderful reality for us who are born again, that we are part of a universal body. Many of us may never meet and yet we will spend eternity together. I think this lockdown situation has actually increased that feeling of oneness uh, between believers because we're all experiencing the difficulty of separation from our churches. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, I'm really missing it. I'm really missing it. To be together on uh, a Sunday morning and to um, take the bread and the wine and to remember the death of our wonderful Saviour, the Lord Jesus, to sing hymns of worship together, to be together, to share things together, to read God's word together. I'm missing it. You know, we can do things by Zoom and all sorts of other ways, but I can't wait until we can be together again. Fellow heirs, members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus. We participate in this promise. We're not merely included, we're not merely brought in, but we are asked to participate. We are partakers of this promise. It becomes our own. We can call Christ ours and the hope of his coming, his second coming for the church becomes our hope too. You know, this wonderful body that we belong to, it, be it began, didn't it, at Pentecost and it will end at the rapture of the church when the Lord comes to take us home uh, to be with himself. And so we shall ever be with the Lord. What a promise, what a prospect for every Christian. Can you say these things of yourself today? Can you say with a smile that you're a fellow heir? Can you say that you're a member of the same body, that one body? And can you say that you're a partaker today of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel? What a gospel, what a saviour we have. I hope that this time in God's word has been a blessing to you. And I hope that this week you're able to keep your eyes lifted to the glory of the church and beyond that to the glory of our saviour who is the head of that wonderful church. Amen.